Well, hello there, everybody. We're talking our first tornado risk on the plains. Well, the spring, it's not spring yet, but this year in 2024, it's our first tornado risk of the year. So let's take a look at it. You can see here uh, on the Storm Prediction Center on their outlook today, there's a slight risk here in Texas, uh, but the tornado risk actually extends up into the marginal risk, which goes up into Western Oklahoma, pretty broad 2% area. This usually means that it's like, well, no, probably not a tornado, but maybe if a couple of things go the way, this is what that kind of an outlook looks like. Of more concern to me is this uh, large hill area here, actually right along the Texas-Mexico border and on into Texas, closer to San Antonio, that sort of thing. More seasonal down there for something like that to happen. Uh, instability, moisture, everything's a little bit higher down there. So that's today's overall setup. Let's take a look at how things might evolve. We're going to take a look at the HRRR right now, and let's take a look at it. And as you go forward through the day here, you can stop here. Uh, you know, we're, we're in the mid, late afternoon. This is uh, 3, 4 o'clock right now. Uh, and you can see there's going to be a lot of activity even back here in New Mexico. This might even be convective in nature. I'm curious. Let's take a look really quick if that's going to be. Yeah, that would even be convective in nature. Some uh, lightning strikes with that as we move through the afternoon. Uh, but do you see in Oklahoma and in Texas, things start ramping up as we get toward early evening. This is right there, right at five o'clock. You can see storms have started to really uh, take off here in Oklahoma, also increasing in intensity down here in Texas. This matches what we're expecting. And as you move into the uh, six o'clock time frame and then uh, past sunset, you see storms are getting stronger, more numerous, that sort of, and then they eventually line out. We get a couple of complexes marching across Texas, also a little bit of uh, storm activity still in Oklahoma. You can see why there is a slight risk out because there is going to be a pretty hefty line down here in Texas, especially as we head into tomorrow morning. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, concern hours, I guess is the best way to put it. The times when we're looking, well, maybe this is going to be uh, something we want to be keeping taps on, right? That's something where uh, wanting to really take a look at. So let's take a look at some soundings here really quick. Uh, this is at 23Z. This is before sunset. Let's take a look down here in Texas ahead of some of that storm activity. You can see this actually looks pretty good uh, in terms of thermodynamics. You have a lot of instability. Look at all this instability above, above the freezing line. This small zero to one kilometer uh, hodograph there that almost no no link there whatsoever. That This is a classic big hail sounding. You could certainly get some big, large hailstones out of this, especially with that uh, 56 uh, knots of zero to six kilometer shear, that one to six kilometer photograph is very large. So yeah, you could certainly, this is this is a big hail sounding. So down there in Texas, especially right before sunset, you could get some pretty big hail stones out of that. It's a reason why uh, this whole area down here is outlooked with a hatched risk, right, of hail. But up here in Oklahoma, let's take a look at this and I'll try to pull a sounding from around those storms. You can see much less instability. This is uh, these numbers a lot lower. You can see here it looks a lot less impressive on the instability front, but there's actually a little bit more length here in the zero to one kilometer uh, hodograph. There's a little bit more SRH. Uh, the shear overall is weaker. The winds down here are a lot weaker or up here are a lot weaker. So I'm not expecting, like Oklahoma is one of those interesting cases where it's a clearly a marginal risk, but I think there are some aspects of it that may be slightly more favorable for tornadoes. Only very slightly though. Uh, but it, it, these are gonna be very small storms. Uh, let's take one more look. That's actually in the wake of that storm. That's gonna be no good whatsoever. Uh, let's go over here and try to get something ahead. So one thing I'm watching in Oklahoma that seems pretty obvious is the storm relative uh, winds are pretty light. So this is going to lead to smaller storms down here. Not that impressive. Uh, down here in Texas, though, let's pull a sounding ahead of this linear segment. There's going to be so many storms. It's just going to be, uh, they're going to be everywhere, right? And I think what you're going to see as the day goes on, as we head into evening, zero and on, uh, zero Z and on, talking about that like 6, 8, 9 p.m. time frame, storms are going to become progressively more elevated, even though winds are increasing in the lower levels. There's a small window down in Texas for a tornado or two right there around sunset, I think. But storm relative winds, 25 knots there, much higher. These are going to be bigger storms, more robust storms overall. And as you move throughout the day, you can see this just keeps happening. I'm going to pull a sounding here now. 
from uh, Texas in the night hours. Uh, you know, th this is a situation where I could see there's plenty of three cape. There's plenty of share. You could get, you know, maybe some spin ups along that line as well. This is all very low. This is all very marginal, though. I don't want to make it seem like there's a substantial tornado threat. There's not. There's not even really a substantial severe weather threat. There's going to be a few severe storms. There's going to be some hail, possibly some rather large hail. But this is nothing we haven't dealt with a lot on the plains, right? So there's no reason to... Uh, make this uh, out to be more than it is. It's going to be an active day. You can see there's a lot of storms on this storm map. Uh, so it's going to be an active day. Let's take a look at the HRF really quick. I love taking a look at this model. It combines models like the HRRR, like the uh, RAP, uh, like the WERFs, it combines all those. So you can see, ah, let's go down to the Southern Plains. There's a reason why this does not look good. I was like, what's going on here? This does not look familiar. It's because I've been looking at Southern Plains, and that's why. Uh, you can see the uh, winds down here, I think, are much better for storm organization, more that southwest variety. Up here, more northerly, more meridional, not, not my favorite type of stuff. Again, the winds in Oklahoma are going to support smaller storms, uh, probably weaker storms overall, but still possibly some marginally severe hell and even a brief tornado. But down here in Texas, looks a little bit more robust, better winds overall in the upper, mid-upper level atmosphere, A50 winds. Well, once you take a look at these, you can see down here where where that those better mid-level winds are, there's not much at all in terms of low-level winds. So I think the tornado risk is very, you're trading off because up here, the low level winds are a lot better, right? But the overall winds are a lot less. There's less turning. So while this looks like a better low level winds, lower cloud basis. So again, very low here, more instability, better storm organization, but light low level winds. So I think there's trade-offs here, classic kind of thing. And also just kind of the type of thing where you would expect for a day like this to not really be that impressive. Uh, if you're looking at the... Um, uh, the Cape possibilities. And this is just kind of the the average of all the models. You can see just surface-based Cape. Where you're not even breaking a thousand really in many places. So again, this isn't the most robust day. Let's take a look at one more thing. This is the uh, Spinny Storms Index that I've uh, called it. It's actually just looking at updraft to list the on models. You can see uh, there's some uh, pretty decent signals down here where that hatched tail signal is in the uh, early night hours, just after sunset. Uh, but there's just, I mean, this is not an impressive signal whatsoever. There is going to be severe weather. There's going to be some big hail, maybe a tornado. <laughs> Very low risk. So I'm not looking at this being a big all-timer type of event. This is every bit of a slight two out of five risk, a low risk of severe weather. There will be some warnings. There may even be a severe weather watch. But overall, this day looks like, well, it's a it's what you would expect in February, right? So with that said, well, we're going to keep on top of it throughout the day on our social media. If something looks a little bit more interesting, you'll see it. And uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.